Cardano has just received one of the sneakiest updates in the recent release of Plutus V3, allowing for interoperability with Ethereum. As a part of today's video, I want to highlight how this is actually going to work and why this is so important. What's up, Beta Nation? Welcome to Dab Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. I'm your host here, Fareed. As a part of today's video, we've got a huge interoperability upgrade that's just come out of Plutus V3 that I believe has gone under the radar. So as a part of today's video, I want to highlight exactly what this is, how this benefits the Cardano ecosystem, and how this is just a very beginning or one of the first steps into a much more interoperable Plutus structure for here on Cardano. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Plutus V3, this was just announced to be released just about a month ago on the testnet or the Sancho net. Prior to that, we had the release of Plutus V2 as a part of the Vassal hard fork. And in a nutshell, Plutus is the native smart contract language for Cardano. Haskell is purely a functional programming language, which is used to build Plutus smart contracts. As a part of Plutus V3, we saw this release enhancing the developing experience, making things a lot faster, a lot cheaper, and a lot more lightweight for anybody looking to develop here on the ecosystem. So I'll leave the link to this official article down below, but it states that Plutus V3 will elevate the developer experience by improving smart contract adoption, bringing support for governance and voting features, as well as fostering interoperability between blockchains. That's that very last piece that I wanna go ahead and touch on. If I scroll down just a little bit, it breaks down what Plutus V3 is. It talks about sums of products and the new cryptographic primitives, which one of them is really key here for today's video. So I want to take a quick minute here just to quickly shout out Marco Mirman for bringing this to my attention. While I had covered the official release of Plutus V3 in prior videos, I didn't fully wrap my head around the actual concept of the Ketchak 256 cryptographic hash function. So it states here that that is a cryptographic hash function that produces a 256 or 32 byte hash value commonly used for secure data verification. Catch Act 256 supports Ethereum signature verification within scripts. That's the crucial piece there. It continues to read on. This is crucial for cross-chain solutions and facilitates community projects by expanding use cases here on Cardano. At this point, without any further ado, I want to take a quick moment to let you guys listen in to Dr. Lars, who had a full breakdown of Plutus V3, talking about the sums of products in all three brand new um, cryptographic primitives in all of their different use cases. So make sure to check out this video in its entirety. It's about 10 to 15 minutes long, but he walks through a demo highlighting all the features that we can expect with Plutus V3. Finally, there's Ketchak256, which is a cryptographic hash function that uh, supports Ethereum signature verification within Plutus scripts. And this brings us to our demo. So I want to demonstrate how it is now possible to send ADA on Cardano to a recipient that is identified by his Ethereum address. So the workflow will be as follows. First, the sender locks ADA in a smart contract and he gives the Ethereum address of the recipient in the datum. Then the recipient signs a message with MetaMask using his address, his Ethereum address, and the message that he signs will be his Cardano public key hash. And then using the Ethereum public key, the Ethereum signature, and the Cardano public key hash, he can create a redeemer that allows him to unlock the funds on Cardano. Now that we've got that out of the way, what I want to do is quickly rehash, no pun intended, what Dr. Lars just broke down. With this brand new Catch Act 256 primitive, we now have the ability to allow Cardano scripts or smart contracts to interact and verify Ethereum based signatures. What this means from a smart contract perspective is that you can now verify signatures produced by an Ethereum based wallet, preferably MetaMask, within a Plutus script or a Plutus smart contract. To round this out, I have a brief diagram that I want to share with you guys and just kind of walk you guys through a test case or through a scenario. So you can imagine here on the left hand side, you've got Alice on the right hand side, you've got Bob. And with this brand new verification here or this brand new verification method, I should say, 
we have Alice who's able to lock up Ada in a smart contract using the recipients, so Bob's Ethereum address as a uh, description or as a piece of the datum when they're making their transaction and sending that ADA to the smart contract. From here, in order for Bob to be able to claim that 100 ADA, he has to verify that he is the owner of the Ethereum-based wallet, of course, which Alice provided that address as a part of the datum when she sent her ADA into the smart contract. So unless you're able to verify that you own that specific address in Ethereum or on Ethereum, you're not able to actually claim those funds on the Cardano network. I want to take a moment to highlight that this does not allow for the Cardano to magically be sent to Ethereum, but what it does allow is for verification of an Ethereum based address before you're able to claim that ADA on the Cardano network. So after Alice is done sending her ADA in as a part of the second step, we have Bob who now has to use his MetaMask, right? To actually sign his Cardano pub key hash or his Cardano public key hash, verifying the ownership of the Ethereum address. So he's basically taking his public key on Cardano and then signing that as a message using his Ethereum based wallet. If anybody else were to do that because they don't have access to that specific Ethereum wallet, which is supposed to be used to verify and re reclaim or claim the 100 ADA that was locked up by Alice, the signature would basically be invalid being signed by a different address than what Alice is expecting. Now, I'd like to take a second to highlight the importance of the signature in this process, not just on Ethereum, but just with signatures on blockchains in general. So signatures are basically a way, just like in real life, to authenticate a particular message or a particular transaction. So in this example, with the catch act function, when you're signing the Cardano pub key hash, what you're basically doing is taking the Ethereum address and stating, hey, this particular address is signing off on this particular message. Now, what this does is it allows for you to authenticate that this transaction is being done by you, and it also ensures integrity. Last but not least, it offers non-repudiation, basically meaning that you can't go back and say that you weren't aware once you've actually signed something with a particular wallet. So that in a nutshell is the importance of the actual signature process, aiming to help verify that you are the sole owner of the address that Alice sent in her original transaction. So once Bob is done with that signature, he's then able to unlock the ADA by using a redeemer, providing his Ethereum public key, his Cardano public key, and the message that he just signed using his MetaMask wallet. Once he does that, he's now able to verify that he is the sole owner of that particular Ethereum based wallet, therefore unlocking and giving them access to those 100 ADA on the Cardano network. And that'll take me to the end here for today's update highlighting the brand new Catch Act 256 hash function, which has now been released as a part of Plutus V3. Again, this opens up the door to interoperability. While it's just a very small step, I think that this is just the very beginning, especially as we're going to see Plutus begin or continue to mature into V4, V5, and V6. So for anybody who has a DAP that wants to verify transactions or verify that somebody on Ethereum has access to a particular wallet before releasing funds on Cardano, you can now use a brand new function to go ahead and do that. As always, if you learn anything along the way, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If you haven't taken the time to watch the full video, I recommend you go ahead and do so. Dr. Lars breaks down even more functionality with respect to Plutus V3. Again, if you want more content like this though, do consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me surrounding Cardano or Plutus V3, then make sure you leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.